the sport, it's literally blood, sweat and tears. 21. And for people in the know, they know how good this man is. He started climbing at the age of five. Yeah, so now very young. He's... He won gold at his home World Cup in copper last year in Slovenia. Yeah, that was quite a special moment. And then by the end of the season, he won uh, the overall lead. Uh, well, he became overall lead champion. Yeah, so he's defending that. Brings that right foot up. Oh, bit of a nervy what start for the men here. What a good start. The, a slap problem. The, the B layer has a terrifying job, frankly, to do right now. I don't know what he'd do if the athlete was to fall in that position, but now he's got a rope on, so things will proceed. They don't have a crash pad down on the floor or mat or anything. They do not, no. Matt, volunteer. Well, as a Matt, I'll do a great job. <laughs> Wait. Oh, the puns are rocking here in the commentary box. Uh, it's getting late. This is like past my bedtime. <laughs> It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll say some outrageous things from now on. <laughs> All right, we're watching the men's roots. Luca, very slow at the start, making sure of these moves. It did look like it was hard right from the beginning. Yeah, when they mentioned tricky start, that wasn't. I didn't visualize that. I thought they were going to come in with some other holds. Yeah, and a Ooh. big swing. And the setters did say we could lose some athletes there, but Luca is through cleanly. Right, he stands up on that right toe, makes the clip. <laughs> Has a look at the time, he's done a lot of climbing already. He's only about, well, only five clips into this, but they're low clips here. And ter they turn out to be quite important. Yeah, we've already seen a misclip. In fact, Shianso is standing right in front of us in the commentary box. She's, Jane has her arms around her. They're talking together. It's really nice to see. But right now, Luca is on the wall. And he's got to be careful of quick draws, too. Every time I see a quick draw, I want them to clip it immediately. OK, he's in. Thank goodness. So the route here kind of S's on itself, goes over to the left, and that left foothold is the only one he's got, all dual techs, until he drops into that hole. He goes far to the left, cuts back to the right. Just keeps an eye on the time. He probably does beginning moves. I mean, he was very delicate and careful, and that's how you have to approach a sequence like that, but it might be quite some valuable time he will need later on. Yeah, I think maybe he keeps looking down because you don't always expect a start to be that difficult, and you're just trying to sort of time things. All right, so he starts the moves over to the right now. Left, right foot on the jib, left foot on the no text, which he thinks better of. And wraps underneath, nearing the halfway point now. Yeah, there was some, I guess, some decisions with his footwork, and that definitely cost him some energy. Just He's just clearly looking and thinking what to do. Yeah, this was one of the moves that Rousset was also imagined as something hard. Yeah, those double half moons framing the wall nicely. But this is a tricky sequence coming up, a big move. Slightly blind pocket around the corner. You can just see it coming into your screen now. It's about it's to hit the, the light. Shadows. It's in the shadows. You know when something is in the shadows, you have to see it, see it in a creepy way. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll, uh, no. <laughs> color up my commentary. <laughs> All right, reaches over, matches the side pull, has the toe in. This move is blind from the angle. This is the hole that I said earlier was difficult to see for the ground. The athletes would have had to have gone a long way back to stare around the corner. And he's taking his time on this. But the time is ticking away, two minutes, and he's still a couple of meters below the head wall. And there's quite a lot of climbing to go on the head wall. But he knows this, this move is going to be tricky and hard. Yeah, it's a bigger, no feet really. Oh, feet on the edge of that sign for a sec, pulled it away, then to the blind pocket. And it's a good hold, once you get it, once <laughs> the crowd. Oh, he's not using the thumb jib, 
The shaking on those feet. The whole left leg is shaking. Goes on the head wall. Cloud of chalk left behind. He says goodbye to Chamonix. All right, one done. First time we get to see this route and first potential super hard crux move. Remember how fit Luca is. Sam Avazu is out. French crowd get behind him as you'd expect. They've already had Helen on the podium here tonight. Can they get the double from Sam? Nod to the B layer, approaches the wall. On the way here, I bumped into a French, uh, a former French lead champion, and I was like, can you tell me anything about Sam? He's just like, he's so strong, full stop. Who was that? Geoffroy. Uh, ah. Yeah, Sam is super, super strong. Gets the toe hook in. And the big move into the big pockets. Now you have to aim for small jibs. Gaston Light with the right hand. That's the crimp he has to hold on to. Not very good. Upgrades the right hand immediately. Much faster as well from Sam than Luca. Deciding to take that tactic. He's probably so hyped to climb here in front of a home crowd. And he only climbed here in Chamonix in, uh, in semi-finals in 2018 and 2022. Last year, he was in finals. And what a knee bar he's found as well. There is a jib uh, on that half moon at the back of it. That's what he's using. On the right side, you mean? Yes, exactly, for that right foot. And then the knee obviously presses in. That's a good find from Sam. Out onto the crimps. He's moving quite quickly through this route, isn't he? He really is. I guess it shows off his bouldering shape from Innsbruck in third place. It was a bit surprising that he didn't. Um, he was in semifinals in Innsbruck, but I guess he was probably tired from the boulder round. Yeah, he might still be in that boulder form, but certainly whatever he's decided to do, he's wanted to go for it down lower. Luca wanted to take his time, be more sure of the moves. Shaking uh, off. Well, whatever, he's reached the same position. Now this blind move around the corner. There's a bit of chalk left by the setters to hint at where it is. Or is that from Luca? Might have been from Luca, but they said it was marked a little, mm. so perhaps. I think it was Luca's thumb, certainly, that caused that. That was a flawless jump. Yeah, accuracy there from Sam. Good work. And the crowd is going wild. Well, they're watching their athlete climb into a gold medal position. And he's close to it. I think this will upgrade his score. Just flickered his eyes around. His... Right hand on the crimp. Gets the blind foot up in the lead now. He's breathing heavily. Those are such small holes. And 20 degrees overhanging up there, so it's not like a slab. And from now on, it's meant to play with the volumes, the gap in between the volumes. Gets that now. Sam Avazu is pretty close and topping out. The crowd are behind him, three moves away. Big traverse to the no. left was a foot pop that did him. He's got his head in his hands for a sec, but that is the high point and will take some beating. He seemed so in control in the flow. That was so surprising. So Sam goes at the top. We'll watch a replay to see exactly where that foot pop was. There's a bubble. Well, that's flashed, though, on the wall as Sam looks up as well. He's trying to spot it. I wish we got a close-up on, on his footwork over there. Next. Dojan Lee is out. Let's see what he can do. Now here we go, third athlete out. 
And we know where the new high point is, right up on that head wall. I wonder if he thinks that uh, Sam topped because the crowd went wild. Possibly did, yeah. I'm not sure if it's, yeah, he might have heard that. He certainly would have heard the reaction to it. Mm. All right, so fingers underneath, shouldery, awkward move. In fact, you can now see why Luca took his time on that. It's a hard sequence. I think he'll do it, go for the uh, a clip and a rest here. It stretches out towards the left, gets the side pull. He's trying to figure out whether he goes to the left or does the double. I think he should have done the double off that move the first time, and now he adjusts. <laughs> Holding the one armor and a full one armor there. Almost resting. resting. Just on one rock, one arm. Also coming from from a very strong Boulder season. I mean, he did win in Prague this year. Yeah, that goal was pretty incredible. <laughs> Great finals, that one, if you haven't. Adam got the silver. Dogan is trying to figure this out, though. Reaches up towards the crimp, which is on top of that volcano-like hold, out towards the next crimp. Here's another, like Luca. Perhaps Luca was struggling down low, not being that slow. All right, bumps the right hand over into the pinch now. And we know there's a potential knee bar in here. It'll be interesting to see if he uses it or sees it. We saw the little chip that's inside there that helps with that, with that pinch with her left hand. And now he matches on it. Yeah, he's there, shakes out now into the Gaston. Well, he's in a knee position. Would need to go a little higher up to get the knee in. It's just comfortable hanging out there. <laughs> right, shaking out. Yeah, on those, on those type of holds and rests right now, his um, index finger on his left hand is just slotted in between the hold and the wall, and you can really like hang on it down. Almost, yeah, almost like a finger jam, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like when you're resting on, on ice tools, your hand is just resting on the on the bottom. So you don't have to over grip. Who knows, maybe it's been ice climbing or dry tooling. It's quite a big scene in South Korea. It is indeed. All right, left hand, left foot over as he reaches into the underclick. Out with the right hand. Looking pretty casual as he stands on that left foot, but the time is going. He's another one a little slower. To the fourth of the half moon dishes. He's also taking his time though. I mean, he only has two minutes and a half left. He's just a little past the halfway mark on this wall, but... Oh, he's going to trust that heel to rock up on, does, and now he's starting to speed up a bit as he gets the toe in. The DJ ramps things up as well. Into the second of the side pulls. Now you can clearly see those thumbs marks left from the other athletes. He'll know where he's aiming for. Makes the match again. You can see how much chalk's on his hold. It shows you how long the athletes have been resting on this. Probably the best rest in the route. Big jump into the pocket. Ooh. It was nearly dropped. Shaking out with the left hand. Just fingers he into that shallow like pocket. Jumped above it and then dropped down. Looks for the clip now with the heel in. He's in third now. 
a minute on the clock coming up to. That's not a comfortable resting position. <laughs> it's not great. He's shaking out wherever possible. Oh. And he does slip. You can see it burning. Another goes. Enough for third place at the moment with three gone. <laughs> so Alex Makos will be our fourth out. It will make a difference to the podium. So he comes down to be greeted by the cameraman and his fellow athletes who are waiting for him to arrive on the right of the stage. Let's have a replay of that again. So he didn't get the knee bar, but he got the drop knee in. Shook out for a while there. Out to the pocket. <laughs> did you just see the little shake that he did with his left hand while he, he grabbed the pocket? A big fall down. All right, three done. Five to go. Alex Magos up next from Germany. So, a little smile in his face as he approaches the wall. Checks out this first moves again. So, setter. Luca made that move look really <laughs> sketchy, the first athlete out. I mean, you don't want to fall before the first clip. You really don't. I no. know it's not that far off the ground, but... Especially in Vilas, if you saw that one, mm -hmm. the first clip was a long way up. It was about the height of the second clip. All right, Alex on the right hand, easy through the crimps, just making sure of every move, gets the toe locked in. Those are our three that have gone so far. When he starts climbing on a lead route, he always seems so in control and almost <laughs> makes, it, makes it look too easy. And then by the time he's like about to fall off, it's so sudden. Yeah, he can, uh, he can just suddenly go, can't he? Mid-move. And just looks so chill and controlled at, at the beginning of the routes. Just deciding on which crimp to use there. Right, he decides on the top one. Comes out above the dish onto the next crimp. And you realize how crimpy this first part is, actually, when you see it like this. Alex likes the crimp, though. Drops the knee way down. Makes the clip, is into the jib. And that's the position. It's a good angle to see where he's at. About halfway. Does it, he almost spotted that knee bar. Yeah, it's interesting. Sam's position on that knee bar, it was really leaning way over to the left of it. It looks unnatural. When you see Alex in that position, that looks like a better resting position than the one Sam found. So it was good instinctive reading of the route from him. I'm gathering you're not fond of knee bars for resting. No, I love a knee bar. It's just it's just the angle that Sam was at. Yeah. You see yeah, how yeah. it works, but then And went out to that hole. The... No, I just still slipper first to keep going. Because Sam kind of did that. He upgraded that right foot when he got it in. For Alex here in Chamonix in 2009, it was his World Cup debut. And guess what? He got into semi-finals. There we go. Not a bad debut to have, is it? Gone on from strength to strength from there. All right, Alex on the crimps. Nearly dropped that, saved himself. We'll get the heel locked in, reaches through, and we know there's another opportunity for him to shake out and rest here. We missed him for a couple of years on the comp scene. Like, he took a long break from 2011 to 2017 and just climbed all over the world, <laughs> possibly every uh, hard boulder and route. I mean, he got up to 9B plus outdoors. Yeah, he's a very active outdoor climber. He spent and most like, of his off season doing and it. Likes pockets. Likes pockets, so, true. So, yeah, in his off season, like in Margalef, I mean, these are quite big pockets compared to Margalef. They are. <laughs> You've touched them, have you, Terry? All of them. Right. I went on like You've 2,000 routes. <laughs> I'm a fan of Margalev climbing. Uh, Alex is setting up for this blind move around the corner.
jumps to the pocket, holds the swing, legs kicking above the crowd as they clap. They're all sitting on the road down there watching. It's shut, don't worry. Super I did packed. tell my friends to go over there for this move specifically. Out with the left hand on the pinch. Drops to the right, gets the side pull. Alex uncoils, slowly, slowly does it as he tries to find the clip. It's kind of trapped between his foot, it's beneath him. It's awkward, but he's got it in. Yeah, with the rope touching the foot like that, it just creates some rope drag and makes it heavier to clip. So not ideal. And he falls, a camera zoomed in on the hold he lost. Showing us actually how nasty it was, the one he was going for. But that has moved him up into silver medal. Sam Abazu still leading the way with 50. It's more like he looked right away as his, at his fingers when he popped off. And just remember seeing him in qualies, like he kept chalking up even like before the route. He was like waiting half an hour before and kept chalking up. In silver medal position at the moment. So Sam Avazu on 50, followed by Alex Magos, Luca Potica, and Dohyan Lee make up our top four. Four still to come, Stefan Schretz, Colin Duffy, Serato and Raku, and Toby Roberts. He'll be followed by Colin Duffy, Serato and Toby. Stefan is out though. 16th in Vila, 21st in Innsbruck for that the full bouldering season. And he's 179 centimeters tall, so the tallest athlete of the of the finals. And we'll see if that will play a part, maybe with that knee bar or further up high. Let's wait and see. He's on the tricky first start where you've just got to be confident, I think. It's just a case of trusting your movement. Every athlete who's just gone for it down here has looked good, palming upwards. I'm not sure what to do. Right, right hand onto the crimp now. Gets the left underneath. Blows a bit of chalk off his fingers. Makes the double clip, definitely the way to do that. Feet through, launches into the pocket, will match it. And take a moment to shake out on what is a good hold, but it's the feet that are a problem here, you can't really stand down on them. Hooks that right in. Yeah, just manages to find this little rest here and there, also in the semi-final route. He wasn't really rushing through anything. Maybe it's something they learned from outdoor climbing, because he's also quite an avid outdoor climber. He even climbed like 9A plus in, in Oliana, which is a crack that has some real long and pumpy routes. So he he learned, he for sure learned how to manage the pump. Yeah, he's got the endurance game down. Bumps the right hand over. And it's such a mind set to have as well. Making sure of that left hand, working it in, brings the feet under, drops into the pocket, just saves that move. Oh, a double save. That might have burnt a bit, but we had to get something back on this rest. Yeah, pop the hands, pop the foot. Try to figure it out, and we'll need to take a breath here just to steady himself again. Sam, still the only one to see the knee. Yeah, totally <laughs> walk through that uh, that rest there, a potential rest. A good footwork from Stefan as he crosses under. Oh, swings in, bumps again. All right, so he's got the clip in. One more tricky move, and he's got a bit of a shake out before thinking about that pocket to come. Crosses through again, brings the right foot up. Oh, oh, big slip again, he saves it. That was a bicycle slip. So brings the right hand into the pinch, upgrades it, gets the hook in. Probably just needs a couple of seconds to shake and set up this jump. Look at the climbers going on in the background <laughs> of that EP wall. Recreating a moment, maybe. <laughs> Can you imagine in a couple of years? 
and a ball <laughs> falling in the ball. background. <laughs> uh, Stefan is on slightly more difficult terrain here. He's getting ready for the move to the pocket. Watch the right hand, just holds on. His feet are still slipping all over the place. He's in fifth at the moment, moves towards Dohian's score of 39. Flick of the lift, wrist. Out to the side pull now with the right hand. Brings the left up. Right foot out. Again with the left, but he's not high enough. Look at the score. He's still on the podium at the moment. 41, his score. Sam still leading the way. Yeah, Sam came out pretty early, but set a, a quite an important high point. Yeah, very important. The one to beat at the moment. Way up into the head wall for Sam. So, three to go. And we'll start to get some confirmations of podium positions. Colin Duffy, Serato Anraku, and Toby Roberts to come. This men's roots seems to build no specific crux, perhaps, just hard moves after each other. It really tells a lot of the sport. All right, well, Colin Duffy is up. Let's see how he deals with these moves. Team USA has been on the road for a while. A few of them have gone home now. Let's take a bit of time before the World Champs. Others deciding to stay. So about half the team in Europe at the moment. Colin creeps up and stands on his tiptoes. Yeah, these moves, I think if they feel like they go well, you have the confidence for the next couple of them. But if they feel techy, you see an athlete struggle, pause a little. Colin dropping back down. He's having a think about this. Oh, Colin resets as he goes up. Just wants to make sure he doesn't have a silly mistake. Yeah, quite. He's making this. I mean, he's using some quite delicate moves. All right, now he launches up, though. Gets that and here toe it in. <laughs> yeah, and it might be good for him actually just to get off the feet for a bit, yeah. do some campusy moves. Let's activate all of those muscles. Yeah, I mean, he's one of those climbers. He likes a more of a dynamic way of doing it. And you see him sometimes relax. Oh, but that right hand popped big time as he went. For a second, I thought there was a slip. I did too. Oh, I think it might have been, but he saved it going into that jug. An awkward clip for Colin Duffy. Hero takes the legs through. A bit like Luca taking a lot of time on this bottom sequence. Hopefully he'll manage to find some flow. Yeah, he trusts that left foot pressing into it. Left hand into the crimp. Tiny holds throughout, just <laughs> screwed on to bigger ones. Precise with his feet on the no-tex, out towards the pinch, holds that well. It is quite a funny sight when, uh, when in reality it's a crimp and then they use such a big volume. Yeah, it's uh, end, deceptive. It's, yeah, it's like the old style comp uh, roots just with a lot bigger holes. Yeah, Colin slid his hand down the wall there. I don't think he was falling, but it certainly slowed him a bit. And Colin isn't looking 100% yet. He's fifth in Vila. And he's found the knee bar. Sam Aversvu, styly. I said earlier that right foot was on the jib. I don't think it actually is in that position. I think it's on the curve of the whole of the volume itself. It's a weird looking knee bar, but well found by Colin. He's climbing. Quite controlled, but slow. Oh, that was a swing. Yeah, swing from Colin. Little shake of his head. He's making these mistakes that might cost him later on. It's not the cleanest of runs. Yeah, it's like he almost wants to do a move, and then it just doesn't quite happen. 
Yeah, he's looking for the next quick draw now. Struggles to find the clip, gets it in this time. Crosses through and cuts loose again. He's been pretty wild out there. Stretches all the way around that black volume. Gets the toe on, bumps the right hand, gets the left toe in and the heel now. And here we go, this move is coming up. The whole of the bottom of the route builds to this moment. It looks like he's going to jump right into the audience on that shot. That's the hold he's going for. It's good if he commits. Is he going to go statically towards it? He's setting up. I think he's going to pop now, but he's got to release that toe that's going to cause a bit of a swing. Oh, OK. Oh. Holds the swing from okay. Colin. That must give him some confidence. Yeah, he's nailed that jump into the pocket, breathing now as he comes up with the left. And he's had his moments, but he's kept it together. It shows good strength, good mind games here. I mean, let's remember he was the first, he was the youngest um, competitor to join in the Summer Olympics in Tokyo. And he's missed that clip at the moment. He went for the hold, took the fall, and he is not that happy about that. But considering the amount of moments he had throughout that run, to keep going like that, to climb that high on the head wall, if you think every mistake would have cost him a little bit in terms of energy. Strong from Colin. All right, two to go. Colin Duffy is done. Only representative from Team USA. Oh, well, we know one person on the podium so far. We do indeed. Well, Sam Avazu will get a medal tonight in front of his home crowd. Second French athlete to do so. Colin is done and he was pretty annoyed. Well, a hand appears from behind the curtain and Serato walks into the gap created. So Serato, so exciting to watch throughout the season. Yes, indeed. I mean, you all, you kept mentioning he's more of a lead climber. So considering they did those results in bouldering, and at 16, climbing like this, it's so impressive. He's a bit like Yanya, and I don't want to throw names around, but the way that he reads a sequence, executes it without too many doubts. I think that shows some real good climbing technique. And again, it's not that obvious at 16. No, it's not at all. He's learned from some of the best, though, within that Japanese squad. They're bringing him through. Let's see how he can do tonight. It's not overhype. <laughs> <laughs> I made that mistake before. Isn't it our job, technically? <laughs> technically so, yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a balancing act. But we are expecting some big things here for Serato. Tends to not really have bad days. Big leap to the right, holds the swing straight into that straight arm resting position. Brings the right foot up into the heel, into the crimp. Bumps with those crimps, solid so far from Serato. He's trying to just hold the energy, save it for the head wall, up with the pinch. And we can see that difference between Collins' run and Serato. It's these moments where he's a bit cleaner. So as you know, I like numbers and how they match. So far in Villers, he got sixth place, and in Innsbruck, he got fourth place. So I guess it has to be a two this time around. <laughs> right, I, I'm following your maths now. It took me a moment. I'm with you. Because he jumps from yeah, two no, and no, two. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. And I'm, I'm jumping you. him higher. Yep, yep. Thank you. Because it's a jumpy route. So far, we saw two jumps. Yes. There's a theme. <laughs> there is a theme. <laughs> Serato, you need to uh, get Terry's OCD brain in order here. You need a two. You, <laughs> you need second place. You didn't see the mood board back there. <laughs> All right, well, Serato rests on the heel, now cuts loose above the crowd, brings the right toe down. Mm. 
bumps to the third half moon dish on the wall. And just like Toby, he topped both qualification routes. Yeah, so he's had some good performances so far this weekend. Sarasa looking calm, down at the clock. That right arm with a slight shake in it, just showing how much effort he's putting in. He's not displaying it, though. <laughs> he knows the rest is coming up. I think anyone can see that athletes have been chalking up here. Clips with the toe in. Oh, we was thinking about that clip. He checked underneath the other clip. Yeah, well, as we've seen, you've got to make sure. But again, you see in, in his climbing style how efficient he, he is compared to other climbers that were looking around for that toe hook on the left side. He just placed it while, while going up. Yeah, and like he's almost in... instinctively. Sorry. Exactly. No, you're right. He's, he's in a good position. He does it naturally. Ah, talent. Isn't it nice to have? <laughs> it's nice to have annoying when you don't. <laughs> so Serato keeping an eye on the clock as he rests here. There's one over to his left. That's the one he keeps catching. Right, shake out. I think he's almost ready to go for this pocket. No hesitation from Serato. As with Sam, the boulder in him coming out. Reaches through and he's still in seventh. It just shows how important the head wall has been for the men's comp. And he's in it now, standing just above the metal coping. Climbing quickly as that pump starts to come now. Nice, Third. Nice drop knee, really kept him in. Close to the wall. Well, he's just looking for a blind foot. His leg is shaking so much. I think he just had to find it. It's right underneath him, and he wanted to make sure of it. You can see him just testing it almost. Aaron <laughs> finds a heel hook, a really subtle heel hook. Well, he's got plenty of time and he's looking in control still, but now he works. This was where we saw Alex fall. Oh, that left foot wasn't secure. It is now onto the side pull, fingertips only. Serato shaking. up to, well, let's wait for the score. 48 is beneath Sam Avazu's time. Sorry, score. So that means that Sam is guaranteed silver. With Toby Roberts still to climb. Final athlete will come in a minute. Serato, though, up onto the podium. Big wave to the audience from him. He pulls the rope down and <laughs> does the knot. Just 18 year old. We haven't seen him in that many World Cups. I mean, he did great on the youth scene, but. Well, he's, yeah, he's a fresh face. He's new to it. I mean, Briançon last year was his first comp, and he was a bit sort of surprised to do as well as he did. I was surprised, to be perfectly honest, he did as well as he did. I know how good he is, but coming into your first competition is always tough. But from then, he's just built bronze medal in Edinburgh. Gold, of course, in Brixton for the bouldering. And again, go and watch that final boulder. What a <laughs> moment from Toby. And his fellow teammates in Team GB call him the Terminator, so. They do, he's that, got. Uh, that's quite telling. Yeah, well, exactly, he just does not give up. He's relentless, that man. Does a slightly different way in here. Confident from the beginning. All right, well, our last climber. Did he just totally ignore the left, uh, the left, uh, the left hole? Yeah, he did it differently from my knowledge to how everyone else has done it. It worked. He makes sure of these first moves. Not easy off the ground here. Toes in, crosses through. So, Toby, the final athlete who can make an impact on the podium. Sam Avazu, Serato and Raku, Alex Magos currently make up our top three. Will any of them be kicked off, bumped down? He reaches up for a clip. Solid climbing so far from Toby. Just outside of the podium in Vilas, he was fourth there. Strong on the right heel as he comes to the crimp. 
thought about going all the way up, decided to do the better beater, which is that. Left and then right. Up to the left, ignoring the one by his face. So more of a, f for later, a foot. Yeah, that looked like kind of the same hesitation that Alex had, that he went to reach and feel the holds, and also uh, Toby really had to think and decide which, which crimps to use. And now Toby is in, brings the left foot up onto the jib. There's so much creativity involved in climbing. I mean, we've seen, what, uh, 16 athletes, and they all did something slightly different, just like endless possibilities. Absolutely, yeah, and especially this sequence of holds. We've had two athletes finding the knee bar. Toby doesn't even look for it. Shakes out that right hand hard. Reads the next series of moves on the right traverse. Three minutes, 47 on the clock. Also taking his time then on, on the bottom section, isn't he? He's not the fastest, is Toby. Does tend to time it pretty well. Came close in Vilas, had to speed up through the top. Hearing the crowd now as he gets going, leans back, looks down. Enjoying that sound coming up at him. I mean, what a feeling this is. As a climber, to be in last position, climbing last in Chamonix in a World Cup. I mean, it's about as high up that ladder as you could get. And it's his first time climbing out here. So whatever he will do, it's his PB here in Chamonix. There we go. So good for Toby. Eighth at the moment, all the men getting high above that pocket jump. Changes the hands. All right, here we go. This is the jump. It's a good hold. He's got to commit. He's not really pausing. Goes for the lower hand holds. Changes his hands back to the left. Sets himself. Resets oh himself. <laughs> Toby, come on. Giving us a heart attack here. Pulls on with both. The crowd behind him. He makes the yes. jump. It's just about relaxing your body, I think. You're going a bit more vertically yeah. into that. There's a better way of controlling the swing. And he's a pretty good outdoor climber. I mean, in Britain, coming up through the years, he's taking off um, hard route after hard route. And I wonder how actually climbing outdoors plays a part in timing these routes. Because you have no pressure from a timer outdoors. Exactly, we actually saw him in Raventor climbing outdoors. If you oh remember yeah, that. we did. Yeah, yeah. He was crushing nine A's back then. It was such a weird crack to go to. Everybody was like filming themselves. I guess to study the moves. <laughs> exactly, uh, Craig in the UK. Toby fumbles with that clip, gets it in now into the crimps. Looks down for a toe. Oh, this is where Toby Oof. is really good. These moves where it shouldn't be possible, but it somehow is for him. 46, though, and still fourth. Maybe now he gets bumped up. Finds a micro rest, just chucks up as much as he can. He just finds these positions where he can rest on. He keeps looking down for the time, but... I, he's got something left still. Yeah, 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 definitely. High left toe. Wants to rock up high, he's going to try to do that. Playing with the small foothold, trying to make it work. All right, crosses through, up to the pinch. We're getting close to a top. 35 seconds, Toby drop knees high above. This yeah. could be it. <laughs> Toby knows he's got stuff in the tank here, and he knows it's a jump coming. He leaps, he gets it. Toby Roberts is going to clip the chains in Chamonix his first time, and that will be a gold medal, his second of the year. Toby Roberts is the real deal, all-round athlete and he cannot believe it up there. This is incredible. Wow, from Toby. What a showman, I gotta say as well. And what a celebration. Toby Roberts climbed last year in Chamonix. He was the only one to top the route, and that man is in a different kind of form at the moment. And as we move towards the world champs, I mean, you've got to be thinking about him for that combined possibly an Olympic place. Gold medal in Boulder, 
gold medal in lead. Yeah, I mean, he has some pretty good chances coming up to burn. Certainly one of the best all-rounders in the game at the moment. Toby Roberts wins. And he goes back on the stage. <laughs> and you can see the crowd on their feet wanting to get a photo of him. And he will just take a moment to take it all in as the lights shine on him. Toby Roberts waves to the crowd. We'll hear a bit more from him in the flower ceremony. Yes. <laughs> All right, so Toby and Alex shake hands, Serato as well. Let's see if we can hear what they say. <laughs> Alex making sure <laughs> for his podium. Always reminded me, Serato seems to win everything at the moment, so it's, uh, it's worth remembering that in lead. Well, this was Toby shaking that pub out of his left hand. Big move out to the pocket that looked easy from him. Hyped the crowd at the top. He knew he had it in the bag, stuck the final jump. And at that moment, the excitement started to build for Toby. And his celebration, brilliant to see. Waiting, and we're just going to get confirmation of the results. So, Toby Roberts with a top. Sam Abazu, 50, close, but not quite. Silver medal for him. Serato and Raku, 48, gets him the bronze. Alex Mago, Stefan Schweitz, Colin Duffy, Luca Potica, and Dohyun Lee. Well, we kind of expected it at this comp to have some unusual podiums, and we certainly got one that you'd look at twice if you saw it on a piece of paper. It's more that it's exciting what we'll see in Bern and then in the Olympics next year. I feel there are going to become some real familiar faces they, and names. Yeah, they could well be. We'll have to wait and find out the qualifying series all next year. Some of this year as well. It's Compton Laval, Oceana, all over the world. So, yeah, the season kind of extends itself this year a little bit. Well, Sam Abbasu is caught <laughs> on the big screen. Wait for the reaction from the crowd. Silver for Sam. Sam gets his silver medal. And finally, our last medal of the evening. Toby Roberts is ready to get his second. His dad, they told us, is a pretty, is a pretty big fan of F1. And today, one of his favorite won, and he won as well. He did. Quite sweet. Cheers, I haven't actually seen that yet, but... Uh, oh, <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. I had that saved well, on my computer to watch. First up and wins. Is that a surprise? We'll go for a long time tonight. Great from all three athletes. Some of them moving on to Brianson, others resting.